Welcome back to part three of the AutoZam Turbo Swap. Today we're going to attempt the spark plug change, uh, and I'm going to show you where those are and how impossible those are. So we're all familiar with this little hatch. There's the header, there's the new turbo, everything's fine, whatever. Uh, I have everything off though because if you follow the wires that go to the spark plugs, there's the distributor cap. Here are the wires, they go in and it looks like they go into this thing. Uh, it looks like it's just a cover I could take off with some hex heads, some allen heads. Uh, I might have to take out that, but I don't know if that's fuel or not. Uh, I don't know what that is either. I don't know what this is. That's intake, but I don't know if I have to take that whole thing off to get to another spark plug. There's only three. Three. But I'm assuming one's under there, so. Uh, I'm going to try and take off that panel first and see what's in there. And you might be asking me, why am I not doing it from the outside? Why don't I just pop the trunk or the engine hatch lid or whatever you want to call it uh, and do it from there? Well, I'm going to show you. Here's all the stuff I need to get to. And this is, uh, this is the, the roof thing, the cover. Um, this is right under where the window is, not clear to the outside. It's not like a cappuccino where you can just freaking access everything out in the open and changing the spark plugs will take like two minutes. Now this is going to be way more difficult. Thank you, AutoZam. And I plugged that hole that's coming out of the compressor because uh, if anything falls in there, that means I'd have to take off the entire turbo and undo all of this. So screw that. These are just four millimeter bolts. No problem. Come out really easily. Um, this so this is intake it connects to here same same um, unit thing as this uh, this has got to be intake too I mean yeah it comes from the, the compressor so it's fine and this one though I don't know I don't know if it's fuel or not so I'm not really sure if I want to take it off yet I'll try not to and one of the bolts is under here so I'm gonna take this one off this one that I just put back on here yeah whatever Okay, so as I was yanking on this, it just came out because there's this clip right here that this thing just slides into. And so, like that, and then you can just pop it out. Yeah, like that. And then, so now you have this whole panel is loose, or, uh, you know, you're, you can take that off and this can just move out of the way. Yeah, I'll do that next. Wow, what a pain. Right, so now that all of those hex bolts are out, then you can just kind of lift this up and see where the spark plugs are under there. Alright, I've had enough of this. I'm going to see what's under this. Um, I'll just loosen this a little bit and see if any fuel or oil comes out. And then I will take off this cover and hopefully I'll be able to use my, um, my tool, this tool, to see where the spark plugs are. Mm, nothing. Um, I mean, it looks like looks like there was oil in there, or oil goes in there. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe fuel. Who knows? I'll find out later. No, I'm just gonna take this panel off. Yeah, way easier. All right, it's pretty gross. A lot of oil and grease and nasty stuff. And it looks like somebody just kind of forced it in there last time. Uh, it'd be great if I can get another one of these, but I don't know. Maybe I'll look on Jaws. But I don't really care. As long as it works, as long as it just covers the spark plugs. Yeah. Alright, people of YouTube, tell me what that is. I have no idea. Now that we have a nice working space, <laughs> if you can call it that, um, there are the spark plugs. All the wires go in there, and so I should be able to pull the plug and then unscrew the spark plugs out of there and put the new ones in. Yeah. This is, well, okay, I'm not going to say it's easy, but. It seems a lot easier than I thought it would be. All right, that's one. And now I'll just do more. I gotta, I'll probably mark these just in case. This is the third one over here, and then two more. Repeat those steps until you have all three out. And then now we have to actually look for the bolts. So. Let's see if this works. No, it's way too dark. Alright, 
bring in the trusty snake. All right, let's check out our handiwork. There is one of the spark plugs way down in there. And to get the stock spark plugs out, you need a 16 millimeter or a 5 8 inch. And this one actually has a magnet, so that should help to bring it out. So I put it in on the third one. It goes way down in there. I have two extenders on it. Um, and I'm going to use a breaker bar just because it's easier to get the leverage. Yep. And there you go. Stock spark plug. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty burnt, but I don't know. The tip actually looks alright. Whatever. I don't even know what I'm looking at. <laughs> it's a spark plug. However, let's check it out. It's an Iridium NGK. Um, I'm replacing it with what news sent me, an HKS Superfire Racing Iridium plug. Um, yeah, I'll pull this out and we can compare. So there you go. Old versus new. This one looks pretty nice. Apparently you don't have to gap them either. Uh, they just fit perfectly. So I'll install those and then put it all back together. And I can finally put all these hoses in that new intake tube on. Yeah, awesome. And since I'm pretty much working blind, I have my snake camera in there. And that is the hole I have to stick the new spark plug in. So you start by just threading it by hand. And then um, it says on the box to torque it to between 20 and 25 Newton meters. So I have my trusty torque wrench at uh, yeah, 20, about 20 newton meters. Should be fine. I don't want to break anything. I mean, usually I don't mind breaking bolts, but this is not a bolt. This is very important. Once all the new spark plugs are in, all you do is just put these back where they were. Um, I didn't really have to label them since they don't really, they don't really move that much. But yeah, once you put these on, they just kind of snap into place, and you can reassemble them. Put the panel back on and all the hoses and stuff. It's always interesting working on a car when you're you're mostly blind, like you're just feeling around for things. Like, is that a spark plug? Is it a clamp? I don't know. Oh, there's a spark plug. Right. Okay. Cool. And you just put that on. Snap. Done. Clean up this panel a little bit. So I'll put that back, and then I'll put in all the little Allen head screws again, and we should be done with spark plugs. That was a lot easier than I expected, actually. I mean, having everything off really helps. Uh, you definitely, I don't think you can do it from the outside. Um, so it helps to do it all while you have it apart. Yeah. Alright, almost there. To be honest, a lot of this stuff, you know, swapping the header, the turbo, even the spark plugs, would be a lot easier if you just remove the engine. Just drop it out of the car do all the work you need to do and put it back so much easier but my thing is the, the whole reason why I'm not really converting it to electric too um, this all fits into this is because I don't have a garage um, I know it's not really an excuse but it's raining outside and I'm able to work inside the car which is a really cool feature actually I mean it's a pain because you can't really Get your hands in here and you're always getting cut up by this freaking uh, hatch thing right here. But it's it's cool. Um, I'm able to do this without a garage. And the whole idea of swapping the turbo kind of came from not having a garage. Like, I'm doing the best I can with what I have. I'm trying to get the most power I can without needing a garage. Or taking it to a shop, because I don't want to do that. Like, you know, I want to learn more about the car and how it works. And uh, I've never swapped the turbo before, so this is all educational and it's been a really fun project actually even though I hate gas engines and doing all this and getting dirty and nah it's actually pretty fun and I'm doing it for you guys you know how many videos on YouTube are there of people swapping turbos and telling you exactly how to do it in English and even though it's been one of the most frustrating things I've ever done in my life uh, it's been worth it just to make a tutorial video for anybody else who wants to do this kind of thing to this car uh, you know, there's only so many of these cars in the world, so you guys can learn from my mistakes and I can share the tricks that I've uh, picked up in this process.
All right, put this big intercooler intake hose back on. Sign it all down. It's good to go. And now, just one more. Oh yeah, who doesn't like shiny stuff? So I can remove this and bolt it up. And these bolts are actually a five millimeter. Gotta keep you on your toes. Okay, so everything looks fine, but throughout this, this connection to that one. Uh, so I'm gonna get to that now. Basically, here is the original hose. It's way too long. It only needs to be about two inches, maybe. And it needs to go from this thickness down to something a little smaller that would fit on that. So I got these uh, these adapters that fit inside. Um, so I'm gonna see which one fits. This is a 13 millimeter and this is a 10. And then I'll tighten them up and maybe silicone seal them just in case. All right, cutting these. I'm using the 13 millimeter. And I only need a little tiny bit just to fit over this. Yeah, I had to remove the intercooler hose again, but that's all right, I'll put it back on. It should be really fast. And just as I'd hoped, fits on pretty good. It's pretty snug. And that should make up the difference. And all I need of this is about two inches of straight pipe, so I'll just take out the bends and use that. And there you go. That's pretty much all you need. About two inches. And I got some new hose clamps too, so I can tighten it down as tight as I want. So there it is on. Uh, I used a whole bunch of silicone seal just in case, because I don't really want it coming off. Um, but yeah, it's been kind of cool. Just finding ways to be creative and make cool stuff work. So let's just take a moment to reflect. Uh, all of this was a pain. It was a huge pain. I would suggest taking out the engine, but in my case I couldn't. So just dealing with this little hatch was a pain. Um, getting the header back on was a pain. Getting the turbo in took weeks. But it looks amazing. And I'm really excited to start it up. But before that, I need to change the fuel injectors. Yes. Come to the back of the car, pop it up. Fuel injectors are actually behind this intake manifold. In here, somewhere. Uh, uh, yeah, somewhere down there. How do you think I should take them off? She doesn't know. I don't know either. So, this is my problem with internal combustion engines. Sorry for going on another rant, but it has to happen. This is so complex. Where do all these hoses go? Why are there so many hoses? And like, this one just goes nowhere. This hose isn't even connected. Uh, if I if I have to get the fuel injectors off by taking off this intake manifold, how many things does that affect? It's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. All right, my rant's over. Okay, I went inside to check out the fuel injectors just to see how they mount up. Maybe they just clip in. Um, these are the fuel injectors, they're 300 cc's. Um, I'm not sure what the stock ones are, like 195 or something. Anyways, let's, uh, let's do a little unboxing here. Uh, I don't have to put it together, that's great. Okay, so the fuel injector comes in all these parts, you have to put it together. Um, but it comes with instructions in Japanese. Basically, yeah, this piece, like so, and you put these wires in. I really hope I don't have to wire it up. Yeah, it looks like I do. It's crazy. And then you just put that into the injector. And it looks like it's good to go. Okay, I have the snake camera again. And I found one of the fuel injectors. It's way down there under the intake manifold. Yeah, you can kind of see. Unfortunately, it's going to have to wait till part four because this video is already way too long. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.